Do you want to sit a little bit? For me, I'm not going to do anything special when I say I'm going to sit. I'm just going to continue exactly what I was doing already before, because there's nothing special to do. But you, perhaps, need to do something, which is to be with me. Because if you be with me at this particular moment, that you know, you must feel the atmosphere. Particularly if you're sensitive in a good way. If you mean you're open, you're receptive. You could sometimes feel this, because it's a very subtle thing. In fact, I will keep speaking, you know, guiding you from the space. In fact, I've never taught like this. This is just first time I'm doing this anyway. Always different, new, and also same. Because truth doesn't change. So, like for that, very much you see, your posture. It's not only the posture of your body, but the posture of your mind, the openness of your body and mind, and heart. Very important. In that. Of course, the specific postures that in your meditation instructions you will receive that. But the most important thing, if I emphasize, because I'm going to say the most important thing, the crucial point is your back straight. Back straight in an inspiring way. Like sometimes when you're inspired, when you're so inspired that you know you're so inspired that you feel you know electrified, something like you know. Like, then your back becomes straight. It's like a kind of a inspired in your spine. There's kind of some inspiration, like that. You sit like that, really inspired. Body like the mountain. Leave it as it is, and then your hands covering your knees, and this is called mind in ease and comfort posture. Your mouth slightly open, as if you're about to say "ah." You don't have to say "ah." As if you're about to say "ah," but you can say "ah." And the eyes, most important, is not keep them closed, you know, because you can begin meditation if you feel there are a lot of distractions. Then you can keep your eyes a little bit closed, but then slowly you should open up. Because if you keep your eyes closed, what happens is you fall asleep. Anyway, so your eyes very important. You see, when your mind is more dull, because there are two obstacles to meditation: the dullness and the wildness of the agitation. You understand two things? When your when your mind is very dull. You know, like a sleepy, like that. Then you bring your gaze more up. Open your eyes more. When your mind is more agitated, then you bring the gaze more down. You know, traditionally about forty-five degrees. Like you bring your like, like this more, bring it down. You bring your gaze more up when your mind is more dull. Is that clear? But basically, keep your eye open. But not focusing on anything, unless, of course, you're using, like, image of Buddha or something as an object of your practice. Then you focus on that as a support human. Otherwise, generally, like when I like this, I see everything. But I'm not just, you know, there's no speculation. Oh, he's got a nice shirt, or hair is quite mess. It's not combed, you know. <laughs> when did he last wash the hair? For example, there's no such kind of, you know. Oh, where's that nice T-shirt? Where can I buy that? Maybe I should ask, make a note. <laughs> say, where can I find it? Those kind of speculations. You know, when you look at it, but there is no really. It's like traditionally said. It's like a child entering into a beautiful temple. Sees everything, but there's no concept. You see everything vividly. It is said that your body should be like the mountain, but your gaze should be like the ocean. Everything clearly reflected, but there is no going after, speculating. M- not mind turned outwardly, but just being with everything, 
seeing everything and being everything. Seeing and being. And also then can be hearing also. You're in touch with all the senses, you're in harmony with everything. Everything in the state of balance. And therefore there's a kind of a harmony. Then there's no longer disharmony. Even a chaos you find kind of an order, clarity. Because it's a state of mind. We knew that my the mind can find clarity even in confusion. Is that clear? Only thing I would say at this juncture to get the best result, for example, for is that you sit with me and don't lose your contact with me, okay? Contact your especially your eye contact if you can. Just and particularly when I sit like that, do you see there's an atmosphere? Do you feel an atmosphere? Uh, that feel that atmosphere. That atmosphere is actually your meditation. This is a very helpful way for people who are beginning or even for students who have been practicing for many years, sometimes if you really lack, lack the, you say, last you say, if it's really your meditation is like a flat, there's no kind of juice, then if you do this, you may get an inspiration. You might find some heart in your meditation. Something comes alive. Is that clear? So eyes, the mouth slightly open because it's recommended that you breathe more through the mouth. Because normally we breathe through the nose and that it is said from the more the higher yoga teachings, it says that it goes through a certain and creates what is called the karmic winds which create discursive thoughts. And then when you breathe through the mouth like this, it's like almost the whole function is like a, how do you say? It's like shocked. The discursive, that process. It's like then, so, but then of course you can still breathe through the, your nose, no problem. But generally just more breathe through the mouth. Keep your mouth a little bit open so there's a kind of like a space, like, you know, there's a ventilation. There's fresh air. Not And then also when you say breathe through the mouth, of course, sometimes people become very self-conscious about, you know. When you start breathing, suddenly, you know, your lips become dry and all kinds of questions come up. Don't go, don't go there. Just very, you know, don't go there into kind of, you know. The self-consciousness is slowly you have to drop that. In fact, gradually in meditation, the watcher must go. Watcher. 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 Do you understand me? The watcher must go. The watcher. It's almost the, the you know, the self-consciousness. Just simply breathe. And breathing also natural to the flow of your breath. No special breathing, but more through the mouth. And the beginner should practice for just short sessions is good. Short sessions. Short sessions. You understand? Short sessions. You practice for a little while and then you take a little break. But when you take a break, you can let go of the method, whatever it is, but you don't let go of the mindfulness. Basically, what it means is very simple English is that don't be distracted during the break. You let go of the meditation, but don't get distracted. And then when you're not distracted, and then when you come back and practice again, you find you're much more relaxed because previously, when you're practicing, there's a little bit of like a formality, a little bit of stiffness. Each time you take a break and let go of the meditation, you become more relaxed. Is that clear? More relaxed. And becomes more natural. The next time you practice, it becomes more natural. 
After a while, what happens is that you don't have to take a break because actually meditation is a break. 